my name is Reetta Lindberg and she is Elisa Hanhirva. We also came from Kispo Finland like the previous speaker and our topic is learning paths. In this talk we shall tell you about what learning paths are and how they provide a structure uh, way to present educational material making the learning process smoother and more efficient. We focus on what should be taken into account when planning learning paths and we are going to present uh, three different learning paths where learners can develop their knowledge and skills in, in the FOSS 4G tool. Uh, uh, so first a very short introduction about our company. Uh, we consult, develop, train and support our customers who use FOSS4G tools and mm, we have about 25 employees and we have uh, one place in Finland, Kispa Finland and also Kispa Sweden. So, uh, what, what are learning paths? Uh, learning path is a selection of course, courses grouped together for the purpose of progressively guiding the learner to achieve a goal. The purpose is to guide students from the current level of competencies towards a higher competencies level. Uh, learning paths are a way to help the learner to build their knowledge in structure way. Uh, these paths um, guide learners through a series of courses, modules or lessons that build upon each other, progressively developing their knowledge and skills. Uh, learning paths are commonly, commonly used in e-learning, but it's also possible to use it in contact training. Uh, learning paths can be either visual representation of how to navigate the courses or they can be built into a platform. Uh, learning paths are often tailored to meet the needs of different learners, offering, offering flexibility to customization while providing a clear progression and milestones to track and assess, assess progress. Then some words about applicability of learning paths. Uh, learning paths can be used on most e-learning platforms as a way to structure learning. Besides e-learning platforms, learning paths, uh, paths can also be used on digital-led online learning. And we think that differences between e-learning and online training is that online training uh, resembles traditional contact training, but is done using, for example, Google Meets or, or similar, similar video software. Uh, E-learning means that learners study themselves using some e-learning platforms. Learning may include video, lectures, individual or group exercises, readings and quizzes. And of course, learning paths are also suitable for traditional contact training. And then some words about benefits of learning paths. Learning paths give learners a lot of freedom and flexibility within the process. For in the instance, being enabled to learn wherever and whenever they like and learn what they want. Learner can uh, also choose and adduce their own learning paths, which can empower them. And process, progress tracking and goal settings are significant parts of learning paths. They gotta guide students from the current level of competencies towards a better level of competencies. Uh, to mark the competencies or completion of the course, the learner should have some sort of feedback or certification of completing the courses. These are an important part of keeping up the learner's motivation 
and engaging them in the, the learning process. Uh, then learning paths give learners confidence that they are following their training in the correct order. Learners' knowledge grows as each course, course level is passed and learners will feel more empowered over time. Thanks. Um, and when you're constructing uh, your courses or your learning paths, there are a few things that you have to uh, keep in mind to get the planning uh, to go smoothly and to get like not a correct learning path, but something that the student can uh, uh, is happy uh, to follow. Uh, firstly, of course, systematic planning is crucial. Um, you need to uh, develop uh, interconnected courses so that uh, when the student completes one course, they know uh, what to expect from the next course and it's seamless uh, to continue to the next course. And then the other thing you need to uh, think about that there's not too much overlap between the courses, so you don't learn the same things in one course and in the next. Um, and a few things in, in the planning. Uh, you need to define specific uh, learning objectives. Uh, there are a few things uh, how you can plan these, but the smart way, uh, so you have specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely uh, learning object objectives. And then, again, uh, you need to think about to whom the course is intended and what kind of level of skill is required from the student. Uh, these two, uh, this, this will help you think on how to motivate and support the students uh, to keep up uh, with their learning objectives. And of course, all of these uh, help the teacher to, uh, to build different kind of exercises to help with the motivation and support and plan the interconnectivity between different courses. Uh, the next thing, uh, if you have some specific courses already, do you need to uh, modify them or do you need to plan whole entire section uh, of courses or is it something in between? So you modify a few or you uh, build a few new courses between them. But there are a few different uh, ways to differentiate learning paths. These are just a few we picked up. Uh, they are kind of like sequential learning paths that needs to be taken in a particular order. These are very effective to uh, acquire some new skills, uh, but the courses usually need some sort of uh, previous skills to build upon. So you uh, cannot uh, jump from one course to another without completing all the others. Then there are non-sequential uh, courses that are usually some kind of related, but there's no one specific path that you have to take. Uh, these are usually more self-directed and uh, require a few previous skills uh, to master the new knowledge. And the last one, the most free, is uh, pick and choose learning paths, which are uh, non-sequential co uh, courses but there are usually uh, some kind of minimum number of courses that you need to attend uh, to get the whole learning path done. And with these non-sequential and uh, pick and choose learning uh, paths, there are usually some kind of personalized learning path that Reta talked about before. And with these uh, personalized learning paths, uh, students should be able to jump in at any point uh, and change the direction of their courses uh, if they feel uh, the motivation to do something else that they uh, planned before. And um, I'll talk about specific Phos4G problems uh, in the next slides. But when you're constructing the courses, you need to know what platforms or what software you're going to use in your learning path. So how to define the learning path and their job objectives to fit those. 
And then lastly, on how to construct uh, different exercises. Do you want to use some kind of collaborative learning so that the students are working together to building something? Uh, are you just doing demos uh, and the students are, are just watching what you're doing? Or are they doing it at the, at the same time as you are? Or do you have some hands-on learning or inter interactive learning? But with all of these, you need to uh, focus on how you're going to translate the knowledge from your courses uh, into practice. So how the students can use uh, the exercises in their own workflows. And specific with the FAST4G, I'm going to show you the different three examples soon. But um, if you're just focus focusing on one software, say, uh, QGIS. Uh, it's very uh, helpful to just have first the uh, essential skills on just how to use the program and then move on to adva uh, more advanced skills. But if you're using a different software, uh, you first learn the basics, then uh, perhaps the more advanced uh, skills, and then you need to uh, figure out how to steer the student in needing uh, the other software. Maybe they have a, a lot of data and they need to figure out where to store them and then how to use them in QGIS. But here's an example on a sequential path. These are just uh, not specifically our courses, but uh, something, something uh, quite similar. But in the sequential paths, there's just one path that you need to uh, go through to can, uh, collect all the courses. There are no different options that you can jump into, but these are very good for advancing uh, special skills. For here, the example, there's the introduction to uh, GIS, if you don't know anything about geospatial, and then to QGIS, maybe some visualization, then maybe stati statistical analysis, and then remember, you have a lot of data. Maybe you need some postkeys uh, to introduce your data. And then uh, maybe a bit of the same and maybe a bit of the non-sequential part. Uh, these can be crafted more to uh, different interests. So in here, we have uh, introduction to GIS and then introduction to uh, QGIS just for the basics but then uh, you can specify your different needs uh, or interests, uh, what you have. Uh, in the first one, the top one, you have the statistical analysis. Maybe you're interested in processing. Uh, after that, you're maybe interested on how to use different expressions, how to uh, manage your workflow, and then you go into QGIS plugins and make one for UNESCO. And all of these uh, you can jump into from one another and there may be some skills that you need before attending one course, but they should be quite minimal. So you need to uh, teach the basics in every course. And the last one, the most free one is the pick and choose kind. Uh, in here it's mostly personalized learning paths. Everyone can choose from their, themselves what they want and what they need in their own workflows. So in here there are three different uh, boxes which have kind of similar courses grouped uh, one by one. And uh, let's say you know uh, a little bit of QGIS but you want to go to the introduction course first and then you're uh, interested in uh, visualization and you're going to make uh, few different maps and you uh, want to know how to uh, edit your data, then you would choose a few diff different options from the visualization and the editing and digitizing. And then you remember, uh, hey, I need to gather some field data. I'm going to uh, pick another course from the other group and then maybe come back to the visualization and maps and layouts on how to use uh, my gathered data and how to visualize it correctly. And in the top one, there's uh, a bit more like advanced, advanced courses 
that you can move on if you need to. And actually that's uh, all. Thank you. If you have any questions, please feel free or uh, some kind of comments. Okay, do we have any questions? Just silence. Okay, then I will ask, uh, did you already test it, this structure of a course on some audience? Well, this is actually what we should do, but we're not <laughs> kind of doing at the moment, but we're in the process of building some of our, our own learning paths and how to uh, help the students, how to figure out how to nav navigate our courses. Okay, no, no, again, no questions. Okay, it's allowed to end up earlier. Thank you uh, for your presentation and enjoy for switching. Thank you.